happy Sunday. It's me, Teacher Caitlin. I'm so excited to be worshiping with you guys this Sunday. And I hope you guys are so, so, so pumped to go ahead and start our worship and start listening to、um, our sermon this Sunday. So I want you guys to get your hearts ready. I want you guys to be all pumped to worship God. So go grab your Bibles. Make sure you stand up. Make sure there's no distractions near you because we are here and we are ready to dance our hearts away. We are ready to worship God and we are most importantly ready to listen to the Word of God. So, Kids Bay Junior, I hope you're so excited like I am. And let's get ready for today's Sunday service.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He, has said, he, he ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Christmas children, here we go. Hi guys, how are you guys doing at home? I know that you guys are doing really well because your parents have been sending me pictures of how well you guys are worshiping, doing your Wednesday small group, and I am so proud of you guys. Some of you guys have been even sending me in the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed, and you guys are gonna be on YouTube. So if anyone else wants to do this, please send it along. Hmm, I wonder what message God has for my friends today. Well, before we start, let me give you a hint. Last week, we talked about Abraham and his great faith and how God called him. Hello? <gasps> you guys know how your parents pick up the phone when someone calls them? Yes, that's what Abraham did. When God called him, he just da -da 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 -da. Yes, Lord. He picked up the phone and he said, yes, Lord. Now you guys remember that science project that I did with dry eyes? It was so cool. My kids loved it. You see, it was just ordinary water, and that's us. But when dry ice or faith comes into our lives, we can do something so extraordinary and so amazing. My kids had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun watching that video. The point of that video was to look at it and see if we have great faith, we won't just keep it to ourselves. We're going to share it. So before we get started, hmm, Bible boy! Hi everybody, it's me, Bible boy, and I'm going to read the Bible verse for you guys today. Genesis 22 verses 1 to 2, Abraham tested. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, I will show you. Genesis 22, verses 1 to 2. Thank you, Bible boy Mateo, for reading that Bible verse. You are so great. Now today, we are going to talk about, oh, you already know, too smart, Abraham. We're going to continue our series on faith in Abraham. You see, Abraham had great dogs, time, food. No, silly. He had great faith and he obeyed God. And he was told to go to the land that God said would be his. And he left for a country that he has never seen before. And because Abraham had great faith, he lived as a stranger in the promised land. And he lived there in a big mansion? No, he lived in a great big tent. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who were later promised the same promise as Abraham. And now friends, Abraham did this because he was waiting for something very, very special. Was he waiting for the train? No. The bus? No. Abraham was waiting for the eternal city that God had planned and built just for him. And even when Sarah, <laughs> she was too old, she had a cane, she couldn't have children. She had faith that God would do exactly what he promised. And she had a son. Remember friends, that was last week's message. Her husband Abraham was almost dead, but he became the ancestors of many, 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 many numerous people. In fact, 
as many as the stars in the sky and grains of sand along the beach. And every one of these people died. But they still had faith. Even though they had not received what was promised to them at that time, they knew. And they were glad to see the promise from afar. <gasps> God promised me the eternal city, eternal life. Even though they couldn't see it, they knew it was going to happen to them. And when people talk this way, it was clear, so clear, that they were looking for a place to call their own. And if they were talking about this land which they once lived, they could have gone back. Abraham could have gone back to his old home. But he was looking forward to a better home, a forever home, the eternal home, heaven. Yes, friends, say heaven with me, heaven. And that's why God was not ashamed for them to call him their God. And he even built a city for them that Abraham had been promised, Isaac, his only son, would continue his family. And friends, when Abraham was tested, <gasps> that's a big word, tested, he had faith. And he was willing to sacrifice Isaac because he was sure that God could raise people to life. He was so sure of it. And this was just like getting Isaac back from the dead. And this is how the story goes of Abraham and Isaac. God knew that his great secret plan only could work if Abraham trusted him a hundred percent. A hundred, not 99, not 98, a hundred percent. And God had to make sure that Abraham would do whatever and anything any, 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 anything that he had ever asked. So, a few years later, God asked Abraham to give him a present. How many of you guys like presents at home? <sighs> I know I do. Yes, God's gonna ask Abraham to give him the ultimate present. Friends, just wait. We have to see what this present is. You see, not only did God like to receive presents from Abraham, but Abraham also loved giving presents to God. He gave God his best animals, and that was called sacrifice. And that was a way of Abraham saying, God, here's my animals, I love you. That was Abraham's way of saying to God, I love you. Yes, back then, they would give burnt sacrifices, and it would consist of an animal, wood, bricks, fire, and that was considered an offering to God. Now guys, things have changed. Yes, Jesus has come, so we no longer have to give burnt sacrifices, for the ultimate sacrifice has already been paid and already been done. Instead, friends, when we come to church, we bring a present to God too. We bring a few things. We don't have to bring animals. Mm, no, that will stick up the church and wood. Oh, no fires in the church, please, friends. Instead, our offering comes in different ways. We come with a ready heart, heart to worship God, a heart filled with love for God, and we also come with our offering. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? We come with a ready heart, we come with an offering, an envelope. Sometimes we don't buy our ice cream and we put our $1 or $2 or whatever we have that we can give to our God, right? And we also bring our Bibles to church. I'm so glad that my friends love giving presents to God. Now, but this time, God didn't want a lamb or a goat. God wanted Abraham to give him something more. <gasps> much, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him, <gasps> get this, his son, his only son, the son that he loved. Friends, remember last week, we talked about Abraham and how he wanted a baby so badly. 
and he had it at the age 100. <gasps> Friends, remember I told you that's super old. People at that age can't even go to the bathroom. Yes, God gave a big miracle and God was asking for this son again. We're going to see what happened. But this son's name was Isaac. Remember Isaac means <laughs> laughter. Isaac means laughter. And this is something great that's gonna happen. This is when Abraham is tested. How many of you guys like to take a test? Oh, friends. I don't. I'm not a good test taker. And today, Abraham is going to be tested. And we're going to see if he gets 100, 90, 80, or 50. <gasps> friends, we know 50 is failing, right? And I know when my friends take a test, I'm sure you guys work really, really hard and you try really, really hard. And I'm really proud of you. And today we're going to see what happens when Abraham is tested. God says this, Abraham, put the boy on the altar and kill him as a sacrifice. <gasps> How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham did not understand, but he knew that God was his father who loved him. And so Abraham trusted him. Yes, he didn't know what God wanted. He didn't understand. Oh, he didn't want to understand, but he trusted God, even though he could not understand or know what God's plan was. And early in the next morning, <gasps> friends, he could have waited a month, a year, said God, hold up, I will give you my sacrifice in a little bit. No, the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the trails of a mountain and Isaac carried the wood on his back. His father carried the knife and the coals. <gasps> How do you think Abraham and Isaac felt at that time? Oh friends, I'm not sure I can even say. I can't dare to think how Abraham must have felt. I'm a mom and I know how it feels if my child gets hurt. And I can't imagine how I would feel if God asked for this sacrifice of me. Hmm. Papa, Isaac asked, we have everything except for the lamb for the sacrifice. Abraham said, God will give us the lamb, son, do not worry. So they built an altar and they laid the wood on top. And Abraham is going to ask his son to climb on top of the wood. And friends, Isaac didn't understand, but he knew his father loved him just like Abraham did. Just like Abraham did not understand God, he trusted him. Isaac did the same. And so he climbed on the altar and Abraham tied the boy's hand to the altar, to the wood. And Isaac didn't struggle. He didn't struggle. He didn't run away. He just laid there quietly. And friends, he did not make a sound. And now everything was ready. Abraham took the knife and tears were rolling down his eyes. There was pain filling up his heart. His hands were shaken. He lifted the knife high into the air. Stop! God said, don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not die. I know now that you love me because you would have given me your only son. And at that time, Abraham felt his heart leap with joy. 
he took the bounds off of Isaac's hand and he folded him into his arms and he cried. Can you imagine this large, big man, like maybe Haraboji looking man, crying? There were tears that filled his eyes and for a long time they stayed there for a very, very long time in each other's arms, father and son. Wow. And suddenly, Abraham is going to see something crazy. In the bushes, there's going to be a ram, the sacrifice. God had given them exactly what they needed at the right time, at the exact time. The ram would die so that Isaac didn't have to. And so I, Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of the son. And they stood at that mountain top, watching the fire and the incense go straight to heaven. They saw the stars and the velvet skies. And God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something incredible. God wants his people to live, not die. God wants to rescue his people, not punish them but all they have to do is trust him. And friends, one day, someone will be born into a family, God promised them. And he will bring happiness and joys and blessings to all of the whole earth. And God was getting ready to give the whole world the greatest and wonderful present and it was God's way of saying, I love you. Remember I said in the beginning, Abraham gave presents to God and that was his way of saying, I love you God, but now things are going to change and the ultimate present God's gonna give to us. And that was his way of saying, friends, church, family, I love you you and many 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 years later another son would climb another hill carrying wood on his back like isaac he would trust his father and do what his father asked he would not struggle or run away who was he hmm. friends he's god's son his only son, the son that he loves, the Lamb of God, Jesus. I pray my friends at home will have great faith like Abraham did and trust in the ultimate sacrifice that God's gonna give to us, his only son. I pray my friends at home will be filled with great joy and great faith and great love for our God who gives us the greatest present of all, his only son. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for today's message. God, we are reminded that you give to us the best of the best. You want your people to be saved and rescued. And that's why you have this great redemption plan, this great story this great promise and this great gift. Thank you so much that we are reminded that you created us and though we have sinned and fall short of your glory and we do a lot of things wrong, God, you don't just leave us to be alone in our sins, but God, you give us the ultimate sacrifice, your son to die on that cross. We thank you for this story that reminds us that you are a loving God, a forgiving God, a merciful God. We love you, God, so much. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, don't forget, remember in every story in the Old Testament, there is always Jesus. Jesus is written from the beginning to the end. So don't forget about the gospel narrative. Remember, creation is how God created us. Fall is how, you know, we do a lot of bad things. Hmm, let me count the ways. We don't listen to our parents. Yeah, 
Me too. We fight with our brothers and sisters <gasps> all the time. We say things we shouldn't say, and sometimes we think things that we shouldn't think. And that separates us from God. But that's why God's rescue plan and His secret rescue plan is going to send His only Son, which we know, Jesus. And then we're going to go into the next step, restoration. In restoration, we are restored, we are made new, and restoration is heaven. I can't wait to see all of my friends in heaven. But until then, we're here on earth, and we're called here to worship God, to love our neighbors, and to be filled with great joy. I know you guys at home are doing all of the things that God wants you guys to do. And now remember, after their sermon is over, it doesn't mean we click exit. No, friends. I always have exciting projects for you guys. Last week, we did the dry ice, and after our sermon, we're going to do a couple of things. Number one, I have Bible emojis. <gasps> what are that? Well, you guys know, you guys look at the emojis and try to guess what is Pastor Diana's next week's sermon. And I also have a Bible quiz. Yes! I'm going to ask you guys eight questions. It's so exciting. I love making the Bible quizzes for you guys, where I'm going to ask you guys eight series of questions and you guys try to Get the right answer. I know you guys have been listening. I'm so proud of you. And don't forget to send me uh, pictures from Wednesday Small Group, Apostles Creed, and Lord's Prayer, only if you guys want to. I love you guys so much. I want you guys to have a blessing and happy week. And I want you guys to listen to your parents and not fight with your brothers and sisters, okay? I love you guys so much, Kids Space, and I can't wait to see you next week. Bye, guys. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespassers. As we forgive who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
This is Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. It's everyone free, a gift for you, for me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job, Psalms and Proverbs. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, It's a letter from God that sets everyone free A gift for you, for me